Welcome back to the class on analytical weights and hybrid analytical vehicles. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the dynamics of vehicle motion. The tractive force is nothing but a, it is a force which is experiencing between the wheels and the roadway. In case of a wheel, the tractive force will be supplied by the motor. In case of a hybrid electric vehicle, the tractive force will be supplied by combining it by means of motor as well as heating. The dynamic equation of a motion in a tangential direction is given by the km into d by dt of vx of t equal to f tr minus f rl. See here, this is the dynamic equation which is in terms of a tangential coordinate. Vxt is nothing but a velocity of a vehicle in x direction. Ftr is nothing but a track to force. Frl is nothing but a low road force. The difference between these two forces make the acceleration to the vehicle to go on the road. Now this is one of the fundamental equations which is used to describe the motion of an electric motor. Now we want the one more equation to describe the dynamics of a vehicle motion. That is in terms of a gradient angle. The gradient is a function of a velocity of a vehicle. It is also depending upon the x coordinate, xt coordinate, where km is nothing but a rotational inertia coefficient of a vehicle. Km is always lies between the 0 0.08 to 1.1 dimensionless dvxt by dt equal to acceleration of the vehicle. Now this is the fundamental equation, already I told you that this is the fundamental equation, we want one more equation to describe the dynamics of a vehicle motion. So that we have taken as a beta. The beta we can represent it in terms of S, where S is nothing but the distance travelled by the vehicle, or also we can represent it in terms of XF, two are the state variables. Now these two equations we are combined, we are representing a state space model for modeling the vehicle as well as simulating the places. If beta is given in terms of S, the second state variable equation becomes a beta of S equal to ds of by dt, which is equal to Vxt. The same manner, beta of S also we can represent it in terms of Xf, nothing but a tangential force, dxf by dt equal to Vxt by k root of 1 plus df by dxf force square. Any one equation we can take it as state variable to describe the kinetic model of the vehicle. The input for this model is the FTR, nothing but a tractive force, which is coming from the propulsion unit. So one more input to this model is the gradient. The gradient may be the function of a xf or the s. So whatever the input we are giving to this model, depending upon that, we are getting the output here s of t or xf. So one more output variable is the vx of t. Nothing but the velocity of the vehicle in the, in the direction of s. The propulsion power. Propulsion power is nothing but the power given by the propulsion unit to move the vehicle in a any type of road, that may be the plane road or gradient road. Generally, this proportional power will be given by the motor in case of EV. In hybrid electric vehicles, it is given by the combination of motor as well as IC. So, before going to find this proportional power, the designers will be taking some amount of constraints, that is how much acceleration is required at the time of starting for the vehicle, and vehicle weight, and maximum velocity, and vehicle gradable. All these parameters are governing how much power is given by the motor. The torque at a wheel of the vehicle can be obtained from the power relation, the power equal to T T R dot omega W H. This is nothing but a angular velocity of a wheel. This is nothing but a torque at a wheel. This is equal to F T R dot V X. F T R is nothing but a track to force. This is the again the velocity of the vehicle in a tangential. Active. Suppose if we assume that there is no slip between the tides and the road, then we can make a relation between the angular velocity and the veloc linear velocity of the wave. Vxt equal to omega wh into r wh. This is nothing but the radius of the vehicle. So before going to develop how much power is given by the proportion unit, we should take into consideration of the how much power is wasted in a transmission system. Suppose if we take the IC engine base. Vehicle. These are the two wheels, front wheels. These two front wheels are coupled to the, this is the proportion unit. In case of IC vehicle, IC engine is a proportion unit. This is the clutch. This is a multi-gear system. This is a differential. This is a proportion unit 
how much power is given by this proportion unit that also will be taken care by the how much power is wasting in a transmission so always the speed of the engine is not equal to the speed of a vehicle which is going on the road so to match the speed we are using a multi gear system in a ic engine based vehicles the main advantage of ev is the this propulsion unit will be given by the motor the motor input is the battery see here we are using only a single gear system it does not requires any multi gear system because in case of engine ic engine the speed of the engine we can't control but in case of a motor we can control the speed of a motor by means of a drive system so here we are using a single gear system along with the clutch this is the main advantage of the electric vehicle when compared to the ic engine based vehicle the gear ratio and the size depending on the maximum motor speed maximum velocity speed and wheel radius and available track traction between the tires and the road the motor speed is higher then the wheel speed is very low then we have to go for the high gear ratio that is very costly also high motor speed is also desired in order to increase the power density of the motor therefore a compromise is necessary between the maximum motor speed and gear ratio to optimize the cost the planetary gears are typically used for the evs with a gear ratio typically used for the evs force velocity character suppose if you take the vehicle there is some amount of force will be acting on the vehicle so that it is going upward if we observe the velocity of the vehicle we are assuming that the vehicle will be starting at t equal to 0 at the time of t equal to 0 the velocity will be 0 after some time it will reach the steady state value whenever it is reaching the steady state value it means so the acceleration of the vehicle will be zero nothing but the rate of change of velocity becomes a zero so dv by dt equal to zero nothing but the net force which is acting on the vehicle also will be zero so ftr minus fad minus f roll minus fg xt equal to zero already we got this equation previously this is sigma f ftr is nothing but the tractive force FAD is nothing but the force which is applied on the vehicle due to the air. F roll is nothing but a rolling friction force. F G X T is nothing but a force with the gravity of the air. So we are finding the value of F T R. F T R is equal to F A D plus F roll plus F G X T. In previous classes, already we we know the formulas to find all these values. We substitute those values. We are getting F T R equal to M G sin beta plus C naught signum v plus signum v into m g c one plus rho by two c d a f g. The rate of change of tractive force with respect to the velocity that is equal to v signum v into rho c d a f by t u plus m g c one should be greater than the zero. That is the first condition. Next, the tractive force at t equal to zero plus t equal to zero minus should be equal. These are the two things what we can note from this expression. Now, if we draw the if we draw the graph between the tractive force and the velocity, the first equation is representing the the slope of this tractive force versus versus velocity is always positive. See here there is a, some break we can find. This break is due only due to the rolling side. Why this positive slope means it is only because of the force due to the a maximum gradability. This is the one of the important parameter what the designer has to take into consideration before going to design the the power required to the propulsion unit. The maximum grade that a vehicle will be able to overcome with a maximum force available from the propulsion unit is a one of the important design criteria as well as performance design. Suppose the vehicle is expected to move upward gradient slowly with a maximum force. In that manner, we are designing the how much power is required to the propulsion unit the sum of the assumptions when you are going to calculate the maximum gradability the vehicle moves very slowly fad equal to f roll are negligible nothing but the friction due to the air and the rolling friction also will be negligible because the vehicle is going very slowly the vehicle is not accelerating nothing but dv by dt equal to zero ftr is maximum when the speed of the vehicle is near to the zero so this is the center of gravity of the vehicle This is the force which is applying on the vehicle when it is moving in upward direction. This is the FTR. The net of force which is acting on the vehicle when it is moving in upward becomes a zero. So FTR minus FG XT equal to zero. So FTR equal to MG sine beta. From this expression, you can find out the sine beta equal to FTR by MG. 
FPR is nothing but attractive force, your ME is nothing but a mass, G is nothing but a gravitational force. The maximum gradability of the vehicle can be calculated. The maximum percentage grade is equal to 100 into can beta. This is the one triangle where we can find the relation between the gravitational force and FTR. Now this length becomes a square root of mg square minus FTR. So this is a beta. So from this triangle you can find the tan beta. Tan beta equal to FTR by square root of mg square minus FT square into 100. That is give the maximum percentage. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box on my YouTube channel. So that I am always welcome to answer all your questions.